In this video, we're going to talk about the Panasonic EVA-1 PL modification kit. Included in the kit is the PL mount, a small screwdriver for disassembling the camera body, two Allen wrenches, a pack of shims, and a pack of replacement screws. To start, we'll take our small screwdriver and we will loosen the six screws on the top of the camera body. Then we will take the top of the camera plate off and set it aside. This also comes off. Uh, you don't necessarily need to remove it, but sometimes it falls off during the mod, so we'll just set that aside too. Next, we can loosen the two screws holding the side plate in place. All of these screws so far are the same standard, so we can keep them all together and mix and match when we put it all back together. Later, we'll see that there are a couple different screws which we'll need to keep track of. Next, we can loosen the three screws on the front of the camera body. And then there are two additional screws on the bottom. And then we can gently take the face plate off and set that aside. What we're looking at now is the Canon EF mount with five screws exposed and there's a sixth screw under the side plate which we will need to remove. And to get there, we will have to remove the side panel. Next, we will remove the screws holding the side panel on from the base of the camera body. Next, we will remove these two larger screws and set them aside. These are the first screws that are different from the others, so be sure to keep them separate. Okay, now we will gently remove the side panel by starting from the base here, and we will pull this back a little bit to get it around a couple of metal tabs and gently lift it off. We don't have to take it completely off. All we need to do is expose this screw on the EF mount. And we've done that now so we can leave it in place and then move on to removing the socket cap screws. We will need these socket cap screws when we install the PL mount, so be sure to keep those close by. Once those six socket cap screws are removed, the EF mount is loose. Uh, but we also need to remove the pogo assembly from the EF mount before we just pull this off. So to do that, we will set the camera up on its base and we'll take our jeweler's screwdriver and then gently pull this away. You can see that there's a ribbon cable here and we wanna make sure that we don't tug on that. So the first screw that's holding the EF mount on is this one here. So we'll use our screwdriver and loosen it. That's also a unique screw, so we'll set that aside and keep track of it. The next screw is on the opposite side. It's a little bit hard to see, but we can get it here. Great. Now that the two screws are removed, the pogo assembly can be separated from the EF mount and we will use our plastic bag to wrap it around the pogo pin assembly and tuck it into the camera body. Now that the EF mount has been completely removed, we're ready to install the PL mount. This comes assembled, so we'll separate the cap and expose the six socket cap screws. We'll then use our included Allen wrench and unscrew the six screws. Okay, now that those are removed, we can separate our front from the back of the PL mount. You can see we have a tan shim installed. We'll leave that in place because that's required to get the proper flange focal distance on the EVA-1. Next, we will remove this foam ring from the front of the camera body. Set that aside. 
And then we will take our PL mount base and align this with the corresponding holes on the camera body here. And there are two locating pins to tell you that you've got it in the right spot. Um, so just push it down into place and it'll locate on the pins. Then we can go back and add our socket cap screws. One trick that I like about this is we actually don't need to install this sixth screw uh, and that saves at least uh, half the time when you're going back and forth between PL mount and EF mount, you don't end up having to remove the side panel. So for this reinstall, we'll leave this screw out. You're welcome to install it if you want to. We'll take the screws that we pulled out of the EF mount and use them to attach the PL mount base to the camera body. Now we're ready to reinstall the side panel. To do that, we'll reverse the process for taking it apart. We'll push this back down onto the camera body and then install the two larger screws into the back. Now we can reinstall the screws on the bottom. do the two screws on the top of the side panel. And then it's time to reinstall the faceplate. The reason we do the faceplate before the PL mount is that the PL mount ring has to fit over the faceplate because it's larger than the hole. So we will align this with the front of the camera body. And then we will install the three screws on the front. Next, we'll install the two screws on the bottom. All right, next we'll install the foam on the top, and that's shiny side up, and then the top plate. And there are six screws that go into the top plate here. Now that we've finished installing the camera body plates, we're ready to install the PL mount. There are two locating pins that go into the two locating pin holes on the base. And we have the tan shim on the back of this, so we have the proper flange focal distance. So we'll just drop that into place. Then we'll use our 2.5 millimeter Allen screws and the Allen wrench and tighten these into place. Now that those six screws are tight, we're ready to install the cap or a lens and shoot with a PL modified camera. Now that we've finished the modification process, we're left with the EF mount minus the pogo assembly, which is still in the camera body. We have a foam seal and two screws that held the pogo assembly to the EF mount. We have the shim set, which can be used for adjusting the flange focal distance if you find that you need to in the future. And we have our replacement screw set. Because of the EVA-1's rotating ND turret, you have 33.5 millimeters from the flange of the PL mount to the ND turret itself. What this means is only a tiny fraction of PL lenses are not compatible with this camera. So far we've confirmed that the Optimo DP Rouge, the two zoom lenses, are not compatible. And those aren't compatible with reflex cameras as well. So generally, if a PL mount lens works on a reflex camera, it will work on this PL modification. If you'd rather not do the modification yourself, we do offer a PL mount plus modification service. These products are all available in our store now.